Welcome to Smart Remarks, where Mitt's the man. And how sad is that? So here we are the day after the New Hampshire primary, where Mitt Romney cruised with 39% of the vote. Now it's off to South Carolina, where Rick Santorum or Newt Gingrich might do a little bit better, but come on. Romney's got this thing sewn up. I know it, you know it, Romney knows it, Santorum and Gingrich and John Huntsman know it. Rick Perry, we can't be too sure about. He seems to take pride in knowing as little as possible. And then there's Ron Paul, who came in second in New Hampshire with more votes than Santorum and Gingrich and Perry combined, and yet the media continues to insist that Ron Paul is unelectable. That's because Paul frightens the establishment as he's the only legitimate threat to the status quo. It's kind of why I like Ron Paul, maybe more so than Obama. The primary this far, uh, thus far has been fascinating because what we're seeing is the splintering of the Republican three-legged stool. Uh, you got your business conservatives who back Romney. They tend to be social moderates, but in the primary, Romney has to pretend to be an outraged social conservative. It's rather painful to watch, and everyone knows it's a put-on, and that, of course, outrages your real conservatives. But consider how little clout real conservatives have had in this election. At uh, first they liked Bachman, then for about five minutes it was Perry, and then it was Kane, and then it was Gingrich, and then it was Santorum. And really, the only reason Santorum did so well in Iowa was because his 15 minutes of fame happened to coincide with the caucuses. After 20 years of Limbaugh, more than a decade of Fox News' dominance, here we have a conservative bloc desperately waiting for Godot, or at least Chris Christie. Why can't conservatives muster a majority behind one of these other candidates, or why couldn't a candidate more to their liking have run this year? Maybe they don't have as much clout as they'd like you to believe. Finally, the third leg of the stool is the Ron Paul leg, the libertarian leg. Paul's supporters tend to be younger and more independent-minded, and they're the type of people you'd think the GOP would want to court. But Paul is too much of a threat, because here you have a guy who's actually in favor of smaller government as opposed to those who claim to be in favor of smaller government but always want a bigger military and a bigger surveillance state. It makes them nervous. But because Paul's supporters are younger, here his movement is either going to have more clout within the GOP in the future, or maybe at some point they break away and form a third party challenge, which saps votes from the GOP. If Republicans were smart, they'd at least show Ron Paul some respect. They don't, so form your own. All this is rather sad. The Republicans should have cruised this year amidst the worst economy in decades and a president with consistently low approval ratings. And this is the best they can do. It's kind of stunning. It looks like it's going to be Obama versus, Obama versus Romney in the fall. And I don't see how Obama doesn't win in a walk.